12 position there. Yes, 12 position. Uh, what about speaking? Can you hear him? Good morning. Testing, testing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Testing received loud and clear. Great, great, okay. great. Yeah, the Next. position is perfect. Okay. Andrew, looking at the background, do yeah. we bring banners? The banners yeah. are on the way. But the looking at his background, do we need banners? We are just removing something. We just removed T. Oh, sour. So, okay, sour. Then they're still on the way. Hello, Dr. We are now stopping the practice session so that we can start letting attendees in, if that's okay. I think it should be fine. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. The, the way you've adjusted is actually better. Okay, all right. So we are going into a live session now. Okay, thank you.
know I met you in the dark, it was a Saturday night Remember seeing you just dancing in the middle of the crowd There was something about you cause you got stuck in my mind Stuck in my mind, stuck in my mind I thought I'd give it a go and I started talking to you I don't know what I said, but the next thing I knew Is that I held you in my arms and you asked what we should do
paying of taxes by all of us. It's not an option. It is not something we choose. It is something we must do if we have to secure our independence and our democracy. As a nation, we are able to meet our sustainable development goals because of taxpayers, hard work, and their thoughtful efforts in being tax compliant. Taxpayers remain our most valued customers. We continue our journey of simplifying tax procedures through the use of technology, including enhancement of the iTax portal. KRI's customer satisfaction journey is also anchored on improved trade facilitation to enhance tax compliance.
Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Commissioner General for the Kenya Revenue Authority, Mr. Gedimboro. Good morning. How are you? Can you hear me? Am I visible? Am I audible? Commissioner General, I think you are on mute. There you go. Yeah, again, thank you very much. I'm saying I can hear you very well and uh, I can see you but very well. Excellent. How has been your experience from the summit so far? It was fantastic indeed. The ideas flowing were very, very, very nice ideas. Very rich, rich discussions, deep. Because you did very well yesterday as a moderator, and I hope you do as well today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I think we also enjoyed the conversations. They were great, and, and we are grateful that you are here with us today. Today, Commissioner and our distinguished de de delegates, we are going to have a public lecture. But just picking up from where the Commissioner General has left off, our summit, uh, the theme of our summit is now and beyond, enhanced service delivery to improve tax compliance. Now, yesterday, we began the summit with a discourse around risk-based compliance. We delved into tech for compliance, use of big data, and concluded the day with customs in a globalized age. We dialogued on the integrated border management and the Africa continental free trade area. To conclude our two-day summit, today we have a public lecture under the theme Transformation on Stilts Towards Tax Administration 3.0. My name is Wagani Kimani Wamba and I'm going to be your partial moderator. I will be calling upon our moderator for the public lecture today. Our public lecture will be a reflective address on KRA's journey towards the Kenya Revenue Service from an external perspective perspective. We shall seek to grow insights from best practice from other revenue agencies that have taken a transformative approach towards being customer friendly and successfully achieved these ideals. Here now to moderate this public lecture is Dr. Mugambi, Murigi Mugambi. Dr. Mugambi is the commissioner for the Kenya School of Revenue Administration, popularly known as KESRA, which is the the training school of the Kenya Revenue Authority. Dr. Mugambi previously was the deputy commissioner in charge of academic and student affairs at KESRA. He holds a PhD in entrepreneurship, a master's of science degree in entrepreneurship, a bachelor of business administration, first class honors, and a diploma of, uh, in small enterprise management attained from the Galilee International Management College in Israel. He's also a graduate of the Advanced Management Program from Strathmore University. Dr. Mugambi has also been trained in various areas from in South Africa, China, and Bangladesh. Prior to joining KRA, Dr. Mugambi was the founding director of the Mombasa campus of the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, popularly known as JQUAT, where he served as director for about seven years. Prior to joining JQUAT, Quat. He taught at the Kenya Methodist University and also worked at Kenindia Assurance Company. Dr. Mugambi is also a publisher. He's published three books, one, Leadership Beyond the Boardroom, two, Journeying to the Horizon, and three, Teardrops from my heart. He's also published over 30 research papers in, in refereed journals. He's also supervised 15 doctorate students and many students to graduation. With such a profile, we are excited to have this public lecture moderated by the one and only Dr. Mogambi Murigi. Good morning, Dr. Arian. How are you today? Uh, good morning, Wageni. Thank you very much for that profile. It doesn't uh, sound so much like myself, uh, but I'll accept uh, that for now. 
Uh, so good morning, Commissioner General. Uh, good morning, board members. Uh, good morning, our speaker, Rex Arendsen. And good morning, everyone this morning. We are happy to have you. We are happy to host you. And uh, we are joined today by a host of people from different walks of life. We have our Commissioner General, as you can clearly see, we have our board members here. I can see Director Mukesh, I can see Director Mahihu, and a few others. We are joined by our commissioners and uh, senior management from the Kenya Revenue Authority. We are also joined by people uh, from uh, various other walks of life, including uh, the corporate sector, uh, the private sector, that is, uh, universities, and uh, we have people from various countries uh, joining us this morning for this very important uh, lecture. So today's lecture is titled Transformation on Stilts. Uh, towards tax administration 3.0. And so on behalf of the Kenya Revenue Authority, I wish to take this opportunity to welcome you to today's public um, lecture. And there are a number of things that we're going to be looking at, uh, guided by our speaker, Rex Aronson, or Professor Rex Aronson. And one of the things that we are looking at is uh, how do we build an effective and efficient uh, service delivery machine uh, in the way of um, a tax administration? How do we place ourselves at the center of public service, even as we mobilize resources uh, for the nation, and even as we protect our markets uh, through uh, the customs uh, processes? How do we create a satisfied taxpayer? How do we create a taxpayer who is happy not only to pay taxes, but also to continuously engage uh, with us? We are on a journey from the Kenya Revenue Authority to the Kenya Revenue Service, and we are hoping that uh, the whole country and uh, that is represented right here on this, uh, uh, on this panel, uh, on, on this platform, can join us and can walk this journey uh, with us. We have received a lot of feedback uh, from taxpayers, uh, from our staff, and from everyone else on the things that could be improved as we take this journey. And therefore, the journey from the Kenya Revenue Service to the Kenya Revenue, uh, from the Kenya Revenue Authority to the Kenya Revenue Service shall be anchored under various perspectives. The customer perspective, the technological perspective, the people perspective, and the legal and policy uh, perspectives. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it is based on this background that in this year's eighth annual tax summit, we sought from our stakeholders, from our sister agencies, from friends within and outside the tax administration fraternity on the kind of uh, lecture that we should have. And to share with us on these issues that I've mentioned, we have with us a very important facilitator, uh, Professor Rex Aronson. And so Rex Aronson, who is right here with us already, is a Leiden University professor by special appointment. And that means he's an endowed professor. Maybe he'll tell us what that uh, means. Uh, so endowed professor on social and historical context of tax law since June 2015. This chair has been formed by the private founding Balastinga Musen, Professor Dr. Van Dahl Poel. His position is financed by the Customs Administration of the Netherlands, the Belasting Musen Founding and Leiden University. Rex works for one day a week for Leiden University and for four days a week for the Dutch Tax Administration. Rex, we don't know what you do the other two days of the week. You'll tell us. The Dutch Tax Administration financially supports the one day per week segment of Rex at the Leiden University. Rex was an advisor of the OECD's Forum on Tax Administration Secretariat from November 2018 till July 2022. He has contributed heavily to the Tax Administration 3.0 series of our products, and Rex has been heavily involved in transformational activities, especially with tax administration administrations. 
And so uh, it is my humble duty right now uh, to welcome you, Professor Rex Aronson, uh, to deliver this very important lecture to us. Thank you very much, and you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Bugambi. Can you hear me properly? Yes, yes, we can hear you, uh, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thanks uh, also to Ms. Ms. Kimani. Uh, wonderful uh, opportunity to meet so many participants. Commissioner General, uh, good morning. It's, uh, it's 8 o'clock in the Netherlands now, 9.15, I think, in, in Kenya. Let me start by apologizing because now I'm looking right into the camera and to you, but my slides will be shared here. So I will be looking to my slides while presenting and not to you. So sorry for that, <laughs> but I hope you'll, you'll, you'll forgive me. Let me start by congratulating you, the Kenya Revenue Authority, by organizing this wonderful su summit already for the eighth time. So many participants and such a challenging theme today, now and beyond so many challenging opportunities. And I guess perhaps Commissioner General has joined the effort. He has been uh, engaging in some of the, the issues. This FTA OCD plenary in September also endorsed many of the future outlooks we built together within the OCD. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mugambi for, for this wonderful introduction. Yes, I have been working for the OCD for quite a time. And to be honest, I have been working closely with two of your colleagues from your innovation department, Gladys and Mercy, who, who helped the OCD um, to, to build this tax administration 3.0 vision and all the instruments behind. So uh, thanks to the Kenyan tax authority, uh, it is what it is. Uh, and you really, really contributed to this uh, future outlook. Uh, the next slide, uh, please, which pretty much summarizes the things Mr. Mugambi uh, shared with us. So for those who are looking into the slides, that's me. And yeah, like Mr. Mugambi asked, what are you doing the other two days? Yeah, that's, that's my family. Uh, I'm a family man. And I'm enjoying life, nature, uh, my wife and kids, uh, <laughs> to be pretty open, enjoying life. So please, uh, the next slide. So we decided to break up this lecture into three different parts. And actually, you are looking onto a road along a Dutch dike, looking into the future, more or less. And uh, well, you invited a professor to speak, so so I would really <laughs> much like to to start with a bit of theoretical background, which helps us understand, I think, what is tax administration all about, and what the beyond part of your discussion might look like. Before I then dive into the TA 3.0 narrative, and uh, together with you. Um, explore what next steps for you might might look like and in, in between perhaps the moderator can assist us with let's say a very quick q a just to keep us aware keep us uh, engaged so let's start with a bit of theoretical background please next slide yeah the next slide thank you so I just summarized here two of my publications, happy for you to read, of course, and they are both more or less trying to answer parts of the key scientific question behind what the future of tax might look like. And that question is, which mechanisms powered by digital innovations may lead to fundamental changes of the implementation organization of tax administrations? So we are really looking into the transformational impact of digital innovations. Well, let's have a look on the next slide. Because if we talk about this journey 
and and both the moderator and Mr. Bugambi talked about a journey, and the KRA already is is far along this this journey towards an aspirational state of tax administration. But if we look to this societal journey, we of course are in the midst of a bureaucratic age, and we all wonder what the next phase might look like. And we already see, driven by these digital innovations, things happening in a kind of post-bureaucratic age, in which ITs and IT solutions empower people. They're bringing back power to the people, which is a great thing and a bit of a risky thing for some, and a bit of a, well, it makes them nervous how to cope with it as a society, as a leader. But it's all about bringing power back to the taxpayer, to the people within your organization, to perhaps move in a couple of decades to a much more network-centered organization and country, perhaps. Very challenging. And within this, let's say, societal development, we will have a closer look at what tax administration now and beyond might look like. So the next slide, please. Because pre-bureaucratic, let's say in the Middle Ages, it was pretty simple, wasn't it? This, this is a snapshot from a uh, cathedral window in Belgium, which shows you, let's say, the levying of, uh, well, pretty much taxes, very much when things happen. You arrived at the marketplace of a large town in a European city, and you were taxed. Things were measured, things were weighed. Uh, in your barrel, it was, it was more or less assessed what was in and uh, the amount due was calculated and you had to pay on spot. That's a pretty easy way of levying tax, wasn't it? And I think in Africa, you will, you will have seen the same kind of direct levying mechanisms, but all kind of margins, of course, and bargaining and negotiation, but it was on spot and you paid and it was settled. Now, driven by all kinds of administrative innovations, we arrived, like the former picture showed, in a kind of bureaucratic state, the bureaucratic state we are in at the moment. With lots of transactions, a massive growth, massive growth of economic transactions. And what we see, we've seen from a tax administration perspective, where in this picture, you might say the goods, the tax data, and the money. Well, they fit it all in this picture and they came together in this tax related transaction. We now see that these three elements, goods and services, tax data and money, have split up. And the impact of this split up is the existence of a lot of loopholes a lot of time lapse in which you can cheat, in which you can move profits. So the tax gap we are facing now is pretty much a time lap, a time lap between the separation of these three, let's say, tax parts and the connection often within the tax administration because the tax administration combines the data of the goods, the transactions, taxpayer data, te uh, collects the money, the tax money. So but there's a lot of time within be because of the way we organized economy, because the way we organized society. So if you talk about uh, taxpayer-centered service delivery, effective taxpayer uh, delivery, satisfied taxpayers, you have to be aware that one of the issues beneath the things, the challenges we are facing is the fact that both taxpayers and the tax administration is dealing 
with the deconnection issues related to goods transactions, taxpayer data, and the money. All handled within centralized bureaucracies. And these loopholes, well, challenge many to game the system. So we are facing a system that is being gamed. And tax administrations, you might say, are part of that game, trying to do good and trying to be a referee, a good referee. Okay, and the next slide, please. So this is what current tax administration looks like. Many visualizations of the same, let's say, step-by-step -step process. Massive data collection, massive entry of taxpayers, challenging part, first step, registering and finding the taxpayer, and then assessing uh, its liabilities, verifying in many cases, automatically or uh, by hand, collecting the money and solving disputes. So a very step-by-step -step bureaucratic process, which more or less is the engine within our current tax administration model. And one of the key questions, like I showed you in one of my first slides, is how is this bureaucratic model, how is this model challenged and transformed by all kinds of digital innovations? Well, that's what we are going to look in in a minute. And we, we're going to have to look to tax administrations in a bit more different way and a different model will help us. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. The next slide, please. Because we have to be aware that there's a big difference between digitalization, which is, let's say, the current state-of-the-art way of, of trying to enhance service quality, pretty much trying to empower uh, organize lean paper ba paper based and paper oriented processes so the flow of the process still say stays the same but now in an automatically manner gaining a lot of efficiency gains however still a step-by-step -step process digital transformation however and we're seeing this happen all around society already, creating all kinds of new business models, platform business models, for example, digital transformation. It's really about changing societal and economical models and really changing the way people interact, often in a very fuzzy, networked uh, way of organizing. And uh, if you're interested, you could look for the OCD publication on vectors of digital transformation. Really interesting to get a bit better understanding of the engines of the of the things behind this digital transformation and the, the, the great challenges a society is, is facing uh, currently. And the tax administration 3.0 model the OCD has launched is pretty much founded in these kind of uh, deeper mechanisms and understandings. Let's have a closer look. At the next slide. Some say that if you look to tax administration, rules are the main characteristic, are the centerpiece. I would like to challenge that perspective. In my perspective, data are the central element in tax administration. Next slide, please. It's all about managing availability, man managing data quality and accessibility, without proper data of taxpayer events and taxpayers themselves, you can't execute a proper tax administration process. Next slide, please. Because on the one hand, we can see the, let's say, taxpayer ecosystem. It's the taxpayer, a business, or a, uh, a private individual living his life, like me, in the two days I'm not working. 
I'm enjoying life. I'm I'm buying things. I'm sporting. I'm working in the garden. I'm enjoying life with my beloved ones. All kinds of events which produce economic and tax-related data. Next slide, please. Which are, in many cases, tax-relevant. Especially when they relate to a tax base. Um, so so it's, it's very important if you want to implement, let's say, effective tax service delivery with satisfied taxpayer that you start from a taxpayer perspective, recognizing perhaps that these four elements are the key building blocks. A taxpayer living his life, conducting his business, producing data, which in many cases are tax relevant. And there's another perspective. Next slide, please. And that's the legal perspective. That's pretty much tax administration domain and the, the policy domain in which the same elements, the taxpayer, the tax base, and the data are defined from a different perspective, a rule-based perspective. The rules define who is a taxpayer. The rules define what's the tax base. And essentially, the rules define what data have to be collected. So if we bring this together, we'll see on the next slide the full tax administration model, a conceptual model, of course. Um, and this is, this is important to, to understand. We are often um, invited to see tax administration as a service delivery process or as a process of communication. Um, by which we can satisfy taxpayers. But I think if we really want to understand how technologies are impacting tax administrations, we have to go back to the core tax administration model. I often call this model the tax engine. If this is executed properly, and digital innovations will help us reorganize this, then, and this is perhaps a bit challenging, if this is properly executed, then we perhaps do not need taxpayer services because it's all been executed seamlessly without flaws, without questions. We don't even, or much less, need all kind of communication efforts because if the engine runs properly, Tax administration is executed in a seamless way. And this is, I think, the core, core vision on beyond and the core engine of the tax administration OCD model. If you understand this, you understand the core vision of the FTA OCD model, in which, like this slide presents, Taxation is data processing, and it's all about identifying your taxpayer and applying conditions and liabilities to the data we collect. A challenging view, because if we look to the next slide, we can see just perhaps eight core tax administration processes, some defining the world and some identifying the world, the world of taxpayers, the world of events. And uh, well, tax administration is perhaps just data management based on interpretation of rules, specification of rules, taxes due computed, and uh, tax collection. And if this is done in a proper manner in the future, powered by digital innovations, then the next slide will show, will show that all kind of supporting processes will perhaps become less important because, again, communication, service delivery, risk assessment, 
today are very important. But in the future, if the engine runs smoothly, perhaps less important and less needed. Again, this is a challenging view, but you ask me to challenge you on the beyond. And this is what the beyond might look like. And we'll have a close look uh, in a minute, uh, being a bit more specific. Okay, next slide, please. Like I said, the OCD has published a list of vectors of digital transformation. And uh, we can already see many of them challenging the current tax administration model. Computer power, data are omnipresent. You could implement tax administration processes wherever you want. Taxpayers want instant answers and instant services. Wow, how to facilitate that? Uh, ICT tools already facilitate autonomous, intelligent decision making. A lot of challenges, a lot of risks, a lot of opportunities. How could this help reorganize and re-implement this tax engine I just presented? And then again, it's not about service delivery, communication only, but it's reinventing the tax administration business model. Wow, that's a challenging vision and opportunity. It's about beyond. And it's happening already. Outside, new business models are being implemented in which user participation is a, a value driver. Much reliance on intangible assets, very fluid, hard to test, hard to tax. And I think if tax administrations want to be in sync with these external innovations, they have to think about their new digital business models too, to be able to gain the same speed as business innovations and to be able to collect uh, the revenues society needs. Next slide, please. So again, this is the conceptual taxation model. Next slide, please. We have been bringing data to the rules. Uh, you, you'll, you'll recognize that inst in, instantly, I think, your tax administration, like all tax administrations worldwide, is a rule engine, is a bureaucratic organization which implemented rules in his tax systems and collects massive amount of data and processes it in a centralized organization. So today's model, you might say, is all about data to the rules. The beyond model, the next slide, will be about rules to the data. And this will really challenge in the future pretty much the tax administration role. Probably this role will change from a data collection function and a computational function, much more in an outward looking rule sharing organization in which they are encouraging others to implement the rules in their systems to be able to levy tax where the events happen as part of new innovative business models and as part of a new innovative tax administration model. So the big, big challenge in the future, and that's really one of the key drivers of the FTA OCD model, is the transformation of a data to the rules model to a rules to the data model. A really, really challenging paradigm shift. Let's have a look to the final slides of this first part of my lecture, because I think the two other 
challenging paradigm shifts. One is the events perspective. This is just an example, but pretty much others as well. This is an example from a, let's say, innovative company which designed a value layer, uh, a standardized layer on top of the internet, on top of the core technical uh, IP set of specifications. It's in kind of economical layer, a unified economic transaction protocol. Just an example. But what this set of standards illustrates that on the left hand side, where buyers and sellers meet, so on the event side of the model we just saw, instantaneously, a lot of things happen together. Data sharing, start of billing processes, feeding of ERP, and the next slide, taxation is an inclusive part of these business processes. So one of the future outlooks is that in many business transactions, as part of many business transactions, tax just happens. So a second paradigm shift, I would say, a future paradigm shift, is all about trying to include as much as possible tax elements, tax activities into economic transactions as an integrated part of economic transactions. So that's the second paradigm shift. Piloted today, pretty much part of future business model designs and implementations. The next slide, please. So, summing up and trying to answer my scientific question, which we, uh, we stated at the start of my lecture, tax administration and the future of tax administration, tax administration beyond, at its heart, might start to look as the way we did it in the past. So the future of tax administration and the process and the journey, as Tim Mugami talked about, is perhaps a journey back to the future. It's all about creating instantaneous taxation, uh, taxing where it happens, where people are, where the money is, where the data are, tax inclusive uh, processes and activities instead of in a hierarchical bureaucracy, rules and data like we explored. And in the end, I think the world, and we can see it happening already, the world and the economy is more and more becoming a, a complex network. All things integrated, technologically, people, the economy. And instead of trying to fight this complicatedness, and only trying to focus on simplicity, I think tax administrations should try to embrace complexity and become integrated partners of these complex networks and be there. Uh, but that's all about perhaps even a far future. But that's, I think, the horizon we're, we're heading to. Tax as an integrated part of societal processes. Because that's where society is heading to, powered by all kinds of technological uh, innovations. The next slide, please. So this is pretty much the end of my first uh, part of the lecture. The, the other ones will be a bit more brief. But looking to the moderator and looking to my glass of water, sorry for that, perhaps there might be room for one of two questions, a moderator. Ms. Kimani, what do you think? Oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Mugami. 
Yes, yes, uh, Professor. Um, uh, uh, could we perhaps uh, go to the end and uh, address all the questions towards the end? Or uh, would the CG want to ask a question? I can see the CG is on. CG, yeah. CG do you have a question? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor, for a very deep conversation, very clear articulation of the the future of taxation, where it is heading. I just wanted to have clarity on one point, which is in, in the previous slide on tax inclusive network instead of hierarchical bureaucracy. Just to understand a little bit of that. And uh, yeah, a little bit of that. Maybe if anybody else has a question, we can take them at this stage so that we don't lose them. Mm. Thank you very much. Very interesting and challenging question. And uh, <clears throat> again, Commission General, let, let me state before I start answering the question that that's perhaps a bit of a personal uh, uh, intervention, but I'm happy to share that I have been cooperating very um, effectively and with very much pleasure with employees of the KRA when I was uh, working for the OCD. It's it's wonderful to see the engagement of the the, uh, the Kenyan Tax uh, Authority into the OCD's, let's say, partnership model. And uh, Glens and Mercy were of great help, members of your innovation team. And uh, that really helped to build an inclusive uh, narrative. So, uh, so I wanted to share that by heart uh, to you. It was a wonderful journey for me personally. It was great to meet uh, two of your uh, great staff members. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, let me now answer your question. Um, yeah, this second paradigm shift really much resonates with one of my first slides, which presented the societal development, perhaps, from a post-bureaucratic state, the bureaucratic state we are in at the moment, and a, and a post-bureaucratic state, so pre-bureaucratic and post. The current bureaucratic way of organ organizing society is pretty much a, a, a societal and organization model driven by hierarchy. A tax administration is a is currently organized in a quite hierarchical way, centralized way. They have computer power, they have the power, the decision-making power, and all the data stream towards this central node, which is pretty okay, because that's what technology till now only was capable of. We have to, do, uh, to use a lot of computational power, which we can only, let's say, activate by implementing it in a centralized bureaucratic organization. So very sound and very okay. However, if we look to the future, and if we look to the way digital innovations are already challenging uh, private business models, which are pretty much network organized, we all expect that, that societal and governmental business models, operating models, will transform pretty much in the same way. Of course, uh, they will still be, let's say, the, the primary governance function within society, but much more as a network partner. So they are granted with additional rights uh, by parliament, um, but they will much more become integrated within societal networks and societal processes. And um, and one of the ways I think um, digital innovations will help implement this model is by integrating tax-specific processes into economic transactions. For example, the identification of taxpayers. And we all can imagine, I think, that, that when a taxpayer who is not registered yet might be flagged as being a taxpayer 
when conducting an economic transaction. And at the same time is registered in the tax administration database, is perhaps uh, receiving a digital identity, a TIN number. So it's just an example of an integrated transaction. And when he buys or she buys a house, then while paying all kind of well, related tax activities are settled instantaneously. So towards more decentralized way of organizing society, tax administration processes become much more integrated and embedded in, in the way people work, live and create value. Does that make sense, uh, Commission General? Thanks for your question. Uh, thank you, Professor. There is one more question here, and then after that, we'll go to the Commissioner for Domestic Taxes, uh, Madam Rispa Simiu. Uh, so the question is, digital transformation, especially in the context of um, um, embracing complexity, like you said, can be very expensive, and it requires a lot of uh, patience. Yet, uh, uh, tax administrations need to start collecting revenue immediately. Yeah. So what ladder would you suggest that the tax administrations should climb progressively so that then they finally achieve the goal of full digitalization without losing the opportunity to collect enough taxes at the moment? Wow, that's a wonderful and very rich question. My first answer would be, I'll answer this question in the next two uh, parts of my presentation. So, so be with me and bear with me. And the second part of my question would be, um, this is a long-term journey. But I think the main, the main thing we have to be aware of, perhaps especially, strategic management that society will not become less complex it will only become more complex so to 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 stay on the long term a and to to assure sustainable tax revenues we have to align with societal trends and we have to to be able to resonate with more complexity so instead of fighting complicatedness we have to admit and accept that the world is complex and we have to figure out how tax administration processes can be part of that so it's a a mind shift not to be implemented this week this month this year but it's a long-term mind shift it's all about tax administration beyond and perhaps far beyond. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let me now invite our chief uh, tax collector, uh, Commissioner Rispa Simiv. Thank you, Dr. Mugambi. Thank you, Prof, for a very insightful uh, engagement. I have two questions, very brief ones, but let me start. The second one is linked to what you have just said. Ah, thank you. About embracing... Uh, what did you call embracing uh, complexity? Yes. And I'm struggling with that because ideally what we are doing is trying to simplify processes to make it easier for taxpayers to comply and ourselves to apply then maybe the rules to the data. So that then it's easy. I mean, you know, when a taxpayer, even typically, you'll be surprised, even sometimes ourselves, if it's something you don't do every day, that whole process when you have to go through mazes and what you're like, ah, let me pack it. Yeah, exactly. So how then do you reconcile that? So yeah. allow me to then quickly to the first one. You when you started, actually, of course, you've brought it together when you say data and not rules are really the pivot, the, the center yes. of tax administration. And we should be applying rules to data and not data to rules. Yes. Would I be wrong in saying that the two, um, none, 
beats the other in that I would say they're equally important in the sense that when you think about legislation, for example, legislation is typically rules. And certain rules have to be in existence so that they define certain boundaries within which we operate, both from a tax administrator's perspective and from a taxpayer's perspective. Um, maybe just weigh in on that a bit. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Wonderful, challenging questions. Wow, wow, really, really excited. That's the fun of presenting. People always help you understand your own narrative a bit better. And uh, that's really, really, really helpful. Let, let, let me start by answering the, the last question. I agree. Uh, and let me, let me explain uh, why I agree. What, what I like about your way of in, in, interpretation is that bringing data and rules together, let's say that's more or less a kind of informal definition of computation. Taxation is computation and it's bringing data and rules together. You have to decide, you have to compute. And I think the core transformative, um, well, let's say change is moving this computational marriage of rules and data from the bureaucracy, the centralized bureaucracy towards societal processes. And yes, I think it's spot on. Rules and data are closely connected because if you don't bring them together, you won't be able to tax. So the, the bringing together is the core of taxation. Taxation is computation in that sense. So the, the paradigm shift rules to the data is, is, let's say from a deeper understanding, it's moving the computational part from tax administration to the transaction, which helps you reduce time lapse. And in the end, which helps you in the end reduce tax gaps, because we are removing time lapse in which taxpayers can, well, fraud, cheat, repackage money. So that would be my answer to your uh, second question. And yeah, the first one, I couldn't agree more. I mean, yes, please do simplify. However, and, and, and yes, simplification has big, big let's say, uh, opportunities for both tax administrations and taxpayers and in their engagement. However, it is a strategy which fits very well in the current bureaucratic state of tax administration. So it's, it really fits for purpose today. But if we're looking to what tax administration in the future, and not the next couple of years, but 10 years and beyond, but well, you have to have a, a target on the horizon. Uh, it's moving the oil tanker slowly. Uh, then we have to realize that it's not only about simplification, but it, it, it's all about becoming part of a society which is becoming more and more complex. And we have to be part of that complex set of processes, networks. If you, well, if that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Looking, looking to the to, to the moderator. So, sorry for my blunt intervention, uh, Mr. Mugambi. Uh, might it be all right that I start the second part of my presentation? Because I, it, I could imagine that that might answer some of the questions already. But up to you. You're um, in charge of the process, of course. Sorry for my blunt intervention. Yes, uh, uh, Prof. There is a lot of interest. In, uh, in, in the presentation. And I'll just ask that you answer just two more questions and then we proceed uh, to the next session. Happy and to. there are hundreds of questions from uh, the, the, the over 1,300 people oh, uh, wonderful. In, this, in this forum. But I'll just ask that you answer two questions, one from the Commissioner for Investigations, uh, Dr. Edward Karanja, and the other one from uh, the director, one of our board directors, 
uh, Mukesh Shah. Uh, please, uh, let's keep the questions short in the interest of time. And then later on, I'll also go to the, to the other questions. Maybe once you've presented uh, your second um, session, I will go to the other questions from our, our chats and uh, from the rest of the people. Uh, Dr. Karanja, shortly, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mugambi, and thank you, Professor. I think mine is not really a question, but uh, is to have a deeper understanding of what you've talked about that uh, uh, bringing taxation to the economic activities. And for me, I think that's a game changer because it's going to reduce even the cost of compliance by the taxpayers. It's going to ensure that tax is corrected where the economic activities are taking place. And in my mind, I'm thinking, is this the same concept, for example, when we have um, withholding taxes, taxes at source? Is it the same concept, for example, when we have uh, import duty, where we get tax from the source when the economic activities are taking place? And I believe this will be game changer because, of course, taxes will be paid in good time. We will have very few incidences of enforcement and tax arrears. So I wanted to be sure that that's the concept of embedding the taxation in the value chain and ensuring that when the economic activities are taking place, that is the time we take our taxes. Thank you. Thank you for a spot on question. And, and yeah, may I compliment you with your deep understanding of, uh, of the way I try to phrase my narrative, because I couldn't agree more. Yes, these are great examples. Uh, the, the pay system, eh, the, the uh, pay as you earn system in, in, in the wage tax scene is, is another example of this kind of withholding tax. Uh, one, one caveat, these examples mirror, of course, the way in which we are able to implement current taxation processes. I think that future technology innovations and already current technological innovations, like for example, the blockchain, will help us to understand these kinds of mechanisms in a much more seamless, swift, integrated manner. But the examples you presented are great examples in the way we are already able to implement these kind of paradigm shifts in current tax administration processes. So my answer would be yes. Thank you. So Pro Professor, I will now uh, request Director Mukesha to ask his question and I'm quite snookered here because I can also see the Deputy Commissioner General of Tanzania uh, Swalehe raising his hand. I think Swalehe's question will be the last one and then we'll go to the next session after Doc, after, after Director Mukesh. Director Thank you, Fred. Um, Professor, good morning and, and uh, it's a pleasure to e meet you um, in, in, in this global environment that we can now operate in. Uh, my question, my comment is, mine is more of a comment uh, than a question. I, I listened to your uh, comment on complexity. In, in the in the future uh, environment, and and perhaps I would say even in a complex and a compli complicated scenario, if we can keep things simple and go back to basics, uh, the fundamentals will always remain pretty much the same. And if we can break it down to simple components, it makes it much easier to understand and resolve an issue. Um, I think I would say if we if we overcomplexify something, uh, it, the solutions start getting more complicated, yeah. and and therefore it becomes a bigger problem than it actually is. Uh, that that was just my experience and, and comment that I felt I should uh, uh, share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for your engagement. Uh, and and I think I understand what you mean, and and I think I agree. Um, I think that the two, two types of layers or two types of perspectives on complicatedness. Um, one is perhaps the layer of, of tax administration itself, 
the complexity of rules and the com and, and, and the the way we can simplify all kind of processes, procedures, and and rules. And the second one is societal complexity, which is pretty much out of control, even I think for many governments. It happens. People become more networked, businesses become more virtual. Um, and the factors have changed the OCD list. Very, very interesting, I think, for you to, 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 to gain a, a much deeper understanding. Um, um, really challenging list. Eh? It's all about uh, scale without mass, for example. It's how to tax value creation, which is only virtual, uh, uh, aware and, uh, and happening. Um, and these are all examples of, an, let's say, a second layer of complexity in which money flows is invisible is instantaneously there and gone and how to be there from a tax administration process not from an organizational process but from a uh, but from a um, an engagement and uh, and, uh, and and core tax process that's why i framed my model as the tax engine uh, but we can we we have all kind of engines T today we have of course the engine in a physical way in in enterprises and we have these tiny tiny little nano engines and i could imagine if we dream along that tax administration engines might be that small and we can plug them into uh economic transaction processes which are for us very complex but for these algorithms and intelligent nano tax bots might be okay because they're embedded there. This is, of course, the far future and a bit science fiction, perhaps even. But it, it, it helps me explain the two layers of complexity, and and, and perhaps it it helps you. But thank you very much for your for your comment. Thank you. Thank very you. Very challenging. So, Professor, what I understand you to be saying is that the journey has to take us towards seeing all transactions as they happen. Yes, spot on. Thank oh. you very much. That's a great summary. Thank okay. you. Very helpful. Mr. Swalehe, you're welcome. Uh, please make it short. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mugambi. I uh, really appreciate uh, uh, the public lecture uh, uh, put by Professor Rexi, and uh, particular on uh, transformation uh, tax administration uh, from pre uh, bureaucracy to post bureaucracy. And uh, the way he has taken us on the importance of the, of the data in tax administration. My question is. Uh, uh, we have went through the pillars of uh, an effective tax administration, uh, which were put uh, to guide the tax administrators. But now I see now we are moving from uh, the, 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 the way we, 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 we work to administer the, the, the taxi, and now we went to the digital environment. I want to ask you, Professor, will you be able to go through the pillars of tax administration in the, in, the, in the digital environment? That's the first question. The second one is on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, on, um, on accuracy of the da data, especially in this environment of digitalization where our systems are exposed uh, to various uh, um, users. Uh, what should we, the tax administrators, do to ensure that uh, the data remain as uh, useful, remain as accuracy and useful to tax administrators, leave alone the, 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 the exposure of, the, of, the, of that data in the, in the digital environment? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Sweeley. Yeah. Wonderful and, 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 and great challenging questions. The, the pillars of, of digital tax administrations will be part of my next two presentations. The first one will explain which core building blocks the OCD FTA 
together with other countries designed. And the, the third part, the last part, will present a model which might help you as a tax administration authority to assess your own current status in respect of this set of pillars and what might be next steps. So I will present some tools which might be very helpful to you in your journey because every country and every tax administration has, of course, its own journey, uh, given the way you are at the moment. Uh, so thanks for asking about the pillars. So I will, will present them in a moment. Yeah, and data accuracy, I think that's that's one of the key challenges, not only for current tax administration, but also for future tax administration. Um, the my plea for much more decentralized tax administration is among others driven by my let's say search for data accuracy and i think if we can implement tax administration as close to the source and the events then we can assure data accuracy and we can reduce the time lap in which others can tweak data quality. So we have to be there as tax administrations where the data uh, naissance, where they happen. However, that's the future outlook. That doesn't help you in your current challenge at the moment because it's and it won't, won't solve your current data accuracy challenges. It's a very, very harsh issue. Uh, one thing I can see happening is that building trusted partnerships with third-party data providers is key, with banks, with uh, intermediary service providers, which are closer to, let's say, the the moment of transaction and and uh, the creation of data than many tax administrations. So creating partnerships might be a uh, a next step. But again, the the model I will be presenting uh, in a minute will perhaps help you to assess the best next steps for your organization. So, uh, well, part two already starts. So thank. Thank you very much, Mr. Sweely, for crossing this bridge <laughs> and helping me cross this bridge. And uh, I really want to congratulate the organization and uh, our moderator, Mr. Mugambi, with such an engaged audience. It's, it's amazing how inspiring this is, I think, for all of us. So uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. I think you can proceed. I, can I propose that we finish the next two sessions and yes. then we can vote the questions? Yes. Okay. Proceed, Prof. Thank you very much. Thanks for your assistance. The next slide, please. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is the front page of a report you can download from the FTA website publicly available and uh, yeah like i said the uh, the ocd uh, try to imagine and reimagine what the tax administration in digital age might look like so it's it's a very handy document which i think in a much more practical way summarizes um, the things i'll 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 share with you in a minute so the next next slide please And um, so this will be a bit more practical uh, way of, of digesting my academic part of the lecture. And um, the worldwide um, community of uh, commissioners general agreed that tax administration has to start moving to a next phase because there is a burning platform and perhaps Mr. Swahili's last example of your struggle on, on, on data accuracy is an example of this burning platform. Because many of the current tax administration instruments are losing their effectiveness. Still, we are experiencing efforts. Still, there is a lot of 
compliance burden in the system. And um, tax administrations are investing in taxpayer service qualities. But somewhere, I think we are reaching the point that there is no return on investment anymore. You can keep investing in enhancing service qualities, but it won't enhance your compliance rates or revenue rates. If you do what you did, you get what you got. That's basically one of the, the issues the administrations are becoming to face. So one of the elements of the burning platform, the next slide presents the second part. Like I presented, we are facing new challenges, an abundance of information, societal expectations, which I guess challenges tax administrations on the long run to open up isolation, to open up bureaucracy, stop with collecting this massive amount of data because frankly it will be and it will become too much to handle, too late and we have to move and engage with societal stakeholders and be there where things happen and make sure tax happens where the taxpayer is. Again, a long transformative journey, but we can start now. And these are core burning platform issues, elaborated on in the report. So if you want to know more, happy for you to, to, to download and, re and, and uh, read the report. But, but this is the core, let's say, of the burning platform many tax administrations will face or are facing at the moment. Next slide, please. And our dream, our, our vision, is that much of the tax administration processes is, and this might be an example of simplification, has become invisible. And what happens below the line to achieve an integrated frictionless experience is, is invisible, burdenless, and seamless for taxpayers. Well, is it just a way of visualizing the vision? It's uh, a visual from the report. And the motto is, well, text, text just happens and is embedded, as you can see in the middle, an embedded part of natural systems. So tax integrated in the taxpayer ecosystem. The next slide, please. And the FTA, the community of worldwide tax administrations, formulated the vision in, 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 in six bullet points. It's that easy. It's the dot on the horizon. Tax administration will become more and more embedded in taxpayer systems. It will become a part of a system of systems. So not only Will there be one dominant network party, uh, party a centralized tax administration? No, it, it will become much more part of a fluid, complex network. And there's again the complexity element in the in the vision. And by doing so, it it will be a real-time tax certainty provider, both for citizens and for businesses, because time lags diminish instantaneous taxation will happen and you get certainty when you act instead of waiting for days, months or sometimes years. And of course there is this human perspective. I think the core core perspective, transparent and trustworthy for taxpayers, human touch, open for human intervention, although it will become high-end High tech, um, people working for tax administration and taxpayers will have to perceive an open, transparent, and adaptive organization which they can trust and which pretty much will just be part of a whole of government approach. 
my challenging phrase for you, summarizing this six bullet point list with a question mark. So I hope you you won't forget to uh, to uh, to hear the question mark. My summary would be the question: Tax administration without a tax administration? Question mark. Well, next slide, please. In the report, and as part of the vision, the set of tax administrations, together with the, the Kenyan Tax uh, Authority, Revenue Authority, try to create a tool helping tax administrations to understand where they are now and what the vision looks like, creating a common language. And in this tool, let's say represented in a five-stage growth model, five-stage maturity model, the final stage, the aspirational stage, more or less phrases the vision. We'll come back to that later. But if you're interested in the vision, you can have a look at the tool, the report, and the aspirational state, the dot on the horizon, describes the vision. The next slide, please. So, in between, let's, let, let's pause here for a while. So, the key message is that a burning platform challenges the current bureaucratic system. Digital innovation really hits the core element of the tax administration model, and it will have systemic impact. You, you can see the transformation happening from a serial step-by-step -step process to a much more inclusive set of, well, process in parallel, connected to all kinds of societal processes. Not today, not next year, but in the future. And we have to migrate step-by-step. -step. Really trying to embrace the paradigm shifts, reimagining the tax administrations in a digital age. So this will help you design your long-term digital strategy, really long-term, and to calibrate, I think, the core investments you are planning to, uh, to materialize, just to calibrate what you're doing in the next couple of years. Are we in sync with long-term vision? It won't solve today's problems. I'm Really sorry for that. But hey, you hired a professor, not a consultant. So bear with me. The next slide, please. One step back, please. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the next slide. Oh, great. So I think it was Mr. Swahili who, who, who mentioned the pillars, not the policy pillars, but the administration pillars. And the the vision and the future vision try to tries to break down tax administration into six core building blocks you can see them in the midst the building blocks are digital identity tax rules taxpayer touch points governance new skill sets and data management which helps you to Look at your tax administration from a different angle. And the tools the OCD designed resonate with this building block model. Next slide, please. So after launching the vision, uh, the last two years, the, uh, the community of tax administrations worldwide um, has been working on, on, let's say, the delivery of, of seven products, a set of maturity assessment models, which I think are really, really useful for you. Uh, we'll, we'll dive into them in a moment. Some international solutions, three products, 
Again, you can find them on the FTA publications website. They were launched uh, end of September, so really fresh and outward looking. And there are some capacity building information sharing products, I think really helpful for you perhaps as well. And you can have a look at the FTA website uh, and all part of the action plan, the FTA together with tax tax administrations around the globe uh, built. So this is, let's say, a bit of a toolkit which details the vision and which might help you to understand where the world is at the moment and where tax administrations are heading uh, and all open source products. So if you're interested, have a look at the FTA publications website. Uh, so, so please ins- let, you, let, let, you, let you be inspired by uh, all the good work tax administrations have been doing so far. Uh, next slide, please. Will I now dive into some of the details of the first report, the first maturity assessment product, the digital transformation maturity model. It's a detailed description of the vision and it's already used by 55 tax administrations. And I'm I know for sure that the Canadian Revenue Authority used the model. I'm not sure if other African countries use the model too, but this one you can download from the website and you can use as a self-assessment tool. So it really helps you, for example, Mr. Swihele, to, to assess your current position. And it will really help you from a building block perspective, from a pillar perspective, to understand what next steps might might be. And it will help you, and you can reach out to the FTA, I think, to engage in peer-to-peer learning, in peer-to-peer co-creation. Well, let's have a close look at the model. Next slide, please. For example, one of the six building blocks is the taxpayer touch point building block. And the maturity model presents a a growth strategy towards the aspirational states. Well, for example, it says, well, these touch points are moving from paper forms, websites, towards in the future, touch points which are embedded in salary software, perhaps in individual, private individuals, bookkeeping instruments. So tax administration inside. It will shift from reactive to proactive. Tax administration touch point will signal when you have to do what? Will warn you for faults and flaws. So it will become a, well, more or less a, a an embedded societal assistance. Next to the things, in addition to the things you do in normal life. And it will support inclusiveness and accessibility. Very, very important. So, so the maturity model product shows you in much more detail the path of growth. For example, the next slide. And this is, of course, overwhelming, but it's just an example of what you will see in the report. Uh, The report describes, again, in much more detail, what each of the six building blocks on each of the five maturity levels looks like. And you can see on the left-hand side indicative attributes. So every building block is... Um, let's say, composed out of several attributes, you can score. And you you can assess by reading the text, by applying the text to your organization, where you are in this transformational journey. Well, in the next two slides, 
just visualize for this touch point building block the text blocks available in this self assessment tool the next slide please that's just an example you can download it and read it if you want next slide please so that was a short introduction to the digital transformation maturity model. Happy for you to download it, to use it, and you can always reach out to the FDA Secretariat for assistance. Happy to share, and, and I'll come back to, to, let's say, the scores of the 55 tax administrations in my third part of the lecture. So bear with me with, in, a, in a minute, and we'll come back to that, I think, in, in five minutes. But let's have a quick look to the second instrument, the Inventory of Tax Technology Initiatives. Next slide, please. Yeah, next slide, please. Thank you. So this is an interactive tool. The FTA, together with ATAF and many other regional organizations, developed. It's a website. The link is, is on the right-hand corner. You can, uh, you can open it, and uh, it's a massive uh, database now filled with responses of 75 jurisdictions. And um, you can stroll around the data. You can analyze the data. You can answer all kinds of questions. Per building block. Uh, like this visual illustrates. You can see in the left top corner taxpayer touch points presented. Not sure if you can you can read it, but the question and the dots mark the question whether tax administrations have a virtual assistant to respond to taxpayer queries. The green ones, the green dots, present countries that have, and the orange ones present rule-based, and the grey ones present that no virtual assistance is ready at the moment. And you can see a great global spread, and you can assess where you are, where others are, and you can perhaps reach out to others to learn um, and to start co-creating. So again, a very useful tool perhaps, just two clicks away from where you are now. So uh, please feel invited to uh, stroll around, to use, and to perhaps engage in the survey to become one of the members of the responding jurisdictions. The, uh, what I understood is that the OCD FTA will update this database perhaps yearly, and we'll reach out to tax administrations that are not responding at the moment. But already, I think, a very valuable data set for you, which you can analyze from a tax type perspective and a tax administration 3.0 building block perspective. So, a very practical tool to help assess where you are and what might next steps looks like, look like. The next slide, please. This more or less finalizes, I think, my second part of the lecture. This is the outcome of September's FTA plenary uh, meeting in which Commission has agreed to start a new phase in which a strategic framework will be launched new technology tools will be, will be implemented and uh, together practical pilots with, for example, sharing a gig economy platforms will be started. So you might want to consider joining FTA knowledge sharing sessions in which you will be updated on these next steps and in which you will probably be invited to join up and co-create. So uh, 
pop an email to the FTA secretariat and you will they will bring you in touch with the the proper delegates. Uh, the core message here is that phase one is finalized with the vision and the seven products. Two of them are illustrated and a next phase of collaborative activities will start. The next slide, please. Like discussed with the moderator, we'll skip this set of questions and move on to the final part of my presentation, which is a perspective on, no, let's say an action perspective. What could you do based on my academic and my FTA perspective? And let's say using the tools I presented. How could they use and help you in your journey towards tax administration 3.0? I think 10 minutes. Let's have a look. Next slide, please. I think like all journeys, it starts with an assessment of where you are. If you're not sure where you are, it's yeah, neutral which direction to follow. Yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't matter. So it's good to start assessing your tax administration's level of maturity. Per building block. And, and your possession in the, position in the maturity model will show you what next steps might be best. And in many cases, also for very high highly developed tax administrations, continuing your current digitalization efforts and your current simplification efforts might be spot on before you start really transforming. Well, let's have a look. Next slide, please. This is a very challenging picture. What are we seeing? It's a summarized representation of the 55 scores of the tax administrations who use the digital maturity model. So what's the starting position of, let's say, the core of the FTA community? You can see in the spider web, the six buildings box, can't you? Digital identity, taxpayer touch points, the six. They're all detailed into several indicators. Each tax administration using the model, using the self-assessment tool, scored its own position. And the orange dots present the, the average of the 55 on the maturity scale. Five is the aspirational state, four is leading, and three is pretty much established. And if we have a closer look, things pop up, don't they? Questions arise. For example, in the right hand corner below 3.2 data security and privacy is the highest scored attribute of all which is good which is great that's what you're hoping that tax administrations do so on average tax administrations are beyond established from a data security perspective. That's good. Not all, but on average. You can see as well, if you look to the digital identity and, tax, and taxpayer touch point indicators, all pretty much established, pretty much okay. Whereas if we look to the opposite indicators, the soft ones, HR ones, 
skill ones, governance ones, the below established. The majority of the tax administrations is still progressing from an HR perspective, all on average. Well, we'll come back to that in a minute. This spider web is presented in the report, the Tax Administration Digital Transformation Maturity Model. You can download it from the website, the FTA website, and you can have a closer look. But 55 tax administrations on average visualize this current starting position. The next slide. Wow. And that's a colorful illustration and, and, and a very detailed one. Well, challenging to, to perhaps see on your computer screen. But what it tries to visualize is all 55 scores. Each column, Kenya is one of the columns. I'm not sure which one because deliberately all columns are anonymized. But each column presents the scores of the 55 tax administrations. The rows are the building blocks and the detailed indicators. And if you look to the, for example, to the left column, you can see one country who scored only emerging and progressing attributes. And if you look to the very right one, you, you can see a country that, and it's a self-assessment, so it's a subjective, it's, it's their own assessment. So it may be biased, not sure, that's up to them, of course. But on the right hand, you, you can see some countries who are already in a leading stage. And in the middle, you can see many, many tax administrations who are, let's say, experiencing some attributes on an established state, some on a progressing state, some on a leading state. But it really helps you as a tax administration, if you conduct a self-assessment, to compare yourself with where others are. And it helps you to more or less identify your starting point in this digital transformation journey. Because I think you probably would want to start with the blue ones. Why keep on investing in, in let's say, digital identity and taxpayer touch point indicators when they are already established, whereas your HR function and your ability to create governance relationships with external partners is still, let's say, lagging behind. You might want to start investing there. Well, this self-assessment instrument helps you to score and helps you to have a sound strategic discussion within your senior management and within your staff, let's say on the direction of your digital strategy. Where should we start given our self-assessment? Hey, can we learn from peers? And this is a very, well, I would say simple self-assessment tool, which is a great way of starting a digital strategy process and, and, and trying to challenge each other on where you think and your employees think your organization is. Next slide, please. Well, just stepping back and pause a while. I mean, if, if we look to the, to the full data set, not much tax administrations are fully in a leading position already. 
And many tax administrations have a, a scattered set of and a mixture of scores on leading, established, and progressing. The striking thing to me was that from a technical perspective, okay, a lot of progression, a lot of investment, but hey, if we really want to change, we might want to have to invest more in a culture of change management, in new skill sets. It's all about the people and the culture. And from a transformational perspective, and let's say from a bringing rules to the data perspective, becoming a network partner in the future, then again, most tax administrations have first to start investing in tax rule management and governance frameworks, even the leading ones, before they can start this transformational journey. So be aware that you don't overestimate or underestimate your own position. The majority of the tax administration is facing, let's say, challenging uh, starting position issues before being able to start a transformational journey. So for many, investing in digitalization instruments, of course, from a dot on the horizon perspective uh, shared today, is the best strategy today. But it's good to have the dot on the horizon horizon in mind and step by step work towards it in a global community. And I think that's one of the great things of this model, this FTA community. You can find peers, you can share ideas and jointly move forward. But hey, this is my personal analysis of the data presented. The next slide, please. So this might be my suggestion on where to start. What might be next steps now and beyond? And perhaps, again, pointing out to an OCD, a recent OCD product, supporting the digitalization of developing country tax administrations, that might be one of those helpful tools within a toolkit um, available. And happy for the organizers to share a link to, to my presentation or to share my presentation. And you can, you can download these kind of reports on the FTA publication website. But I think my advice, perhaps, sorry for being a bit straightforward, perhaps, but would be kind of three steps approach. Determine your starting position. Use the digital maturity model self-assessment tool. Let the website, the inventory at the global Mac map make you aware of what's already being done and, and, and what inspires you. And assess your capabilities, both internally, but also from your partners taxpayers, third-party data providers, because the journey is a journey which we have to conduct together, together with societal partners, together with taxpayers. And the second step would be design your domestic strategy or adapt your current digital strategy, which might focus for the short term on digitalization efforts, on simplification efforts. But keep the vision in mind. And my suggestion would be that you include the blue marked scores and aim for balancing the scores. If you're, <clears throat> if you're lagging behind, 
and that's perhaps a result in self-assessment. We've seen that in the heat map. If you're lagging behind on the HR respect, why not start investing there? And why start well why keep on investing in enhancing taxpayer touch points while the back office of your organization is let's say well it's a la lagging behind i'm not sure what how, how to phrase it but keep the building blocks knitted together so aim for a balance balanced scorecard and be aware of the human factor And then, yeah, implement and, and redesign and implement. It's an iterative process. You can reach out via all kinds of organizations, ATF or the FTA, for peer-to-peer -peer assistance. If I can recall correctly, uh, the Kenyan revenue agency has had peer assistance together with, I think, the Australians and the Singaporean tax administrations are great joining up, supported by tax administration without borders uh, and join up with your external stakeholders well not not much rocket science it's um i think it's all about starting to determine your your current position by using the tools the next slide please That's where we are now. Now and beyond is your motto. And I hope I have conveyed the message that beyond is a journey and will be a long journey. And it's good to keep the dot on the horizon in mind and to understand, and that's basically the first part of my lecture, to understand the core paradigm shifts which are gearing the transformation. And it's good to understand where you are now. And I think bringing do, those two elements together is the core of, let's say, the change process you're all facing. Well, I hope it helped. I hope I was able to inspire you a bit. And uh, looking forward to the uh, next set of questions, uh, Mr. Mugambi. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Aronson. We deeply appreciate this has been um, a deeply reflective uh, presentation, more like a mirror uh, to ourselves, you know, looking at uh, listening to you and uh, deeply reflecting on where we are uh, as revenue administrations, because several revenue administrations are, are represented in this forum today. I want to ask a question as we go uh, to the panel. And uh, after my question, we'll have Commissioner Tara Saidimu. And then I will request that uh, Lillian Ofwenya, uh, who is uh, in the audience, also be unmuted after Dr. Tara Saidimu so that she can ask the question. We have over a thousand, close to a thousand five hundred people here today. It is completely impossible for me to be able to take all questions, uh, but uh, we're going to devise a way of dealing with this. Now, my question is: These journeys begin in the mind, and we have to transform mindsets and values and attitudes so that then we prepare people uh, to go towards this uh, direction that you've just talked about. You have been involved in various uh, transformation processes and you've worked with various tax administrations, very specifically the Dutch tax administration. What are the two lessons perhaps we could pick on what they have done to trigger this change of mindset and values and attitudes to prepare people uh, towards uh, this movement? Thank you. This question really resonates because it's, it's the deep driver, I think, behind your question is 
how could we join up? How could we learn from each other? Um, if I look back, I'm, I'm pretty much inspired, especially by the examples from both the Australian and the New Zealand tax administration. The elements in their approach, which I really admire, is their outward looking, engaging attitude. So their deep awareness that tax administration, in the end, is not about running a tax administration, but it's motivating and getting in touch with your taxpayers. And being in touch with your environment. And so they are now, I think, ahead of many. And um, in their journey, they um, started reaching out to external parties, inviting them, software providers, um, tax practitioners to start co-creating because in the end most of let's say these might I say middlemen intermediary parties have an interest in compliance management as well they like tax administrations and most taxpayers do not like to make mistakes do not like to correct things. They all like seamless processes uh, because failures are quality costs. Uh, so what I so that's my first what, what, what really resonated with me their openness to co-creation with partners and, and trying to build trust relationships in which both parties gain because. Having good, fruitful relationships with intermediary parties, it's a great leverage. US tax administrations won't be able to, to reach all tax administration, all taxpayers in a one-to-one -one fruitful relationship. You, you need this intermediary set of organizations supporting you in, in helping and assisting taxpayers. That's one. And the second one is 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 the the human attitude and the uh, the deep understanding of the needs of their staff. So those two elements, I think, are core for a successful uh, journey. Pr pretty much a human interest uh, perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh... Commissioner Dr. Saidimu, please proceed. Um, thank you, Chair uh, Dr. Mugambi, and thank you, Professor Rex. Um, my question is, um, first, uh, thank you very much for a very good presentation, uh, very inspiring. Uh, the question is um, uh, aligns to two aspects of the presentation. Uh, the first one, I see, when I look at um, the assessment uh, tool, the the 3.0 the future of uh, tax administrations um i see a lot of um, uh, rules and regulations uh, procedures and uh, processes as what determines um, um what determines uh, the, the, the 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 scoring uh well i i i know other tools have been used um in the past and uh, going forward, uh, like for example, TADAT, where they're using other aspects of uh, that may not relate to the processes, rules and regulations. Um, so the question is how, how does the tool, I mean, how does this particular tool interact with the other tools of assessment? Uh, number two um, is also to appreciate the fact that uh, you know countries or jurisdictions have different levels of implementation, and uh, when you look at the implementation of these particular ones, especially when you look at the web and the and the tabular um, descriptives of the anonymized countries, you, you what you observe is that there is very little or very 
the scoring for um, the, 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 the new, the, the skill sets and the governance framework is actually lower than the, the tax rules, the data, data management and tax payer touch points, and also the digital uh, identity. So the question is, are we running ahead of time? Are the organizations, or I mean, tax administrations, um, taking more, um, more concentration in terms of their time in uh, digitizing and also regularizing the organizations more than managing the, the, the governance framework and the skill set. And uh, finally, also, as I appreciate the presentation, um, is there any open source tool that uh, a country or a jurisdiction can, can assess their own level of their own level of uh, implementation, their positioning um, as we await for, you know, a third party evaluation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very targeted questions, uh, really resonating with my, let's say, key message. Um, I would say, this maturity model is complementary to many other models in the sense that it's really built to, to help you understand where you are from a transformational perspective. So it's, it's really, um, yeah, that's, I think, the niche and the added value of this model, that it's a detailed description of the, the, the FTA vision, and that it's, in that sense, not a technological-driven model, and not a model which is, let's say, based on the current tax administration model and its current way of organizing, which I think Tadat is much more focusing on, which is very helpful. So, so that's, that's, I think, a great asset too. The difference with this model is that it's, let's say, much more created outside in. So from a new, another perspective, looking back to where we are now. So it's trying to create a new type of language resonating with the tax engine I presented in my first language. So instead of inviting you to assess your, let's say, current model and current way of organizing, the model challenges you from a, a journey perspective. And of course, tries to, from that perspective, outside in, of course, tries to connect with the here and now in, in progressing and emerging states. But it's, I think it's a different starting point from a model design perspective. And I think both models, and there are more models, of course, are complementary. Um, and I think the funny thing of this model and, and the scores that it's open source, you, you can easily find the model on the internet. And you can compare with other other tax administrations, um, and that's I think an, an, an answer to your third question. It's you can find it on the FTA website, the digital maturity model, and the, the document contains a set of instructions, a score list, um, an email address, in which, by via which you can connect to the FTA uh, secretariat. Uh, I think a very easy to use uh, model. Uh, and it, it also presents a set of process indicators summarizing how much time uh, tax administrations have, have used, which type of experts they used um, during the self assessments. So, a very practical open source tool. Yeah. And Regards to your second question, yeah, I, I think, again, spot on regards your assessment of where most tax administrations are. Um, 
it's it's um, surprising perhaps if you see the average scores presented in a spider web to see that the majority of tax administrations have invested and are investing a lot in let's say client service and uh, taxpayer happiness whereas perhaps the next step might be to invest more in employee effectiveness and which which might then leverage in better taxpayer services better taxpayer understanding so it might it might open up an unexpected and undiscovered richness of staff creativity so but that's that's i think for me was a surprising finding of what i saw in the in the spider web summary but again i think based on your own assessment you will find out where you are and what your next steps uh might be so i i i really hope this ask, answers uh your question thank you uh thank coming. you thank you thank you thank you very much uh prof uh let us have lillian uh is lillian here with us lillian of Fuenya. i saw your hand Uh, if Lilian is not ready, uh, we can go to Justice Muilu. I also saw Justice's hand. Uh, we're in the bigger audience. Justice? Justice, I can see you unmuted now. Please proceed. Are you there, Justice? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, okay, proceed. Hello. Uh, yes. Good, uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Prof, for your good presentation about uh, tax uh, digitization and uh, the integration. Uh, my question was. Uh, in the other in the, in the other jurisdiction jurisdiction how have you how 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 has uh, this worked well to to, to ensure that uh, inclusivity that uh, the juakal is not left out the farmers are not left out people who are not in the informal informal sectors that is one two how do you do how how do you how how do you approach uh, these uh, this this model to ensure that uh, the taxpayer doesn't feel uh, doesn't feel uh, penalized doesn't feel that uh, he's being uh, pushed to the corner by the administrators three how do you ensure that uh, the taxpayer doesn't run away because uh, in Kenya, we have a tendency of uh, tax uh, running away from paying the right ta tax. Though our, 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 our administration is doing very well in that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, these are really challenging questions. And I think uh, they resonate with many of the challenges uh, Tax administrations in the global south are facing a large informal sector. How to engage with potential taxpayers in the informal sector? How to create tax systems that resonate, that are seamlessly connected and embedded in in their daily lives and their economic situation. I think personally that the report, the FTA report on, let's say, supporting digitalization of tax administrations in developing countries, I 
I showed and which is available on the FTA website, uh, really might be a very helpful tool to learn from experiences from others. The, the ATAF, of course, which, uh, which was a co-partner in producing that report, is a, is a supportive knowledge base and the network organization for you. Um, I am not sure if the model, I, I try to explain that the, the model is really designed to, to bridge the gap between the now and beyond. That's why I like the title of today's discussion so much. I'm not sure if it, if it really helps to solve your day-to-day -day problems now. It, it, it really helps you to design a long-term digital strategy. But the issues you are sharing with us are, I think, core today's issues to you. And I, I don't think the model will, like a deus ex magina or a kind of a kind of magic box, will help you solve the problem. Um, I think so. So that's I think the honest question. Uh, that's why I raised the question: Hey, would digitalization or digital transformation be your journey, your first steps. Um, in the end, I think it's it's all about, and, and your three questions resonate with that, I think pretty much, the journey is all about engaging with taxpayers and engaging with their daily life situation and daily life systems. And the, the question beneath and founding this journey is how to become a partner instead of scare taxpayers and make them run away or give them the feeling that they will be penalized um, for example and then i'll stop a moderator but um, one of the core findings in many tax gap analysis is that many faults are not made intentionally so it's not intentional tax evasion it's often a result of the lack of ability to invest in the right systems a lack of understanding of how processes work so in that respect simplification is often a very good way to start and core in in both approaches is how to engage with taxpayers in their situation um, and the model helps you to understand this from a future perspective feeding your digital transformation strategy uh, but it won't solve issues you are facing changing issues in how to engage with taxpayers in the informal economy. Uh, and that's really, really, really challenging. And, and I think many of, of the tax administration in the global south are really progressing in a good way in, for example, trying to collect e-invoice data, trying to engage with members of civil society to help and support taxpayers to do the right thing. Uh, it's all about, I think, the attitude of trying to be a partner and being trustworthy. Sorry for my long answer, Mr. Mugambi, but happy to end over. We are in a bit in a time constraint, I, I, I guess, but handing over yeah. to you now, sorry. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Professor. And uh, you're right, we have really run out of uh, time, but there is a very important question here. And uh, I think there's a question for you and my boss, uh, who, who 
unfortunately I'll have to ambush. And uh, there's a question that has been sent to me and the question reads, um, CG, we, as, we, appre we see and appreciate your effort towards transforming the organization to become more customer centric. What can we as citizens do to support you? Uh, I don't know whether Rex, you want to weigh in on that before I invite my boss to respond to that question. And then we come to the end. Wow, what an amazing question. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations. What can we citizens do? Yeah, I think that's perhaps it all boils down to that question, doesn't it? Uh, it's amazing. Um, because in the uh, what what I like is the 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 deep intention in the question that um, you know in the end and a bit bit of a challenging answer perhaps but in the end citizens own the tax administration don't they in the end <laughs> it's a bit bit awkwardly formulated perhaps but you're hoping to create together a society in which you can trust on each other's interests, trust on each other's commitment, citizens investing time and money to co-create society, to make, to, to, to make tax administration happen. Uh, so, so one of my answers would be, you know, what could citizens do? be an honest taxpayer and uh, share that gospel with your neighbors be transparent be the positive be the change perhaps now i'm becoming to sound like a politician perhaps but <laughs> <laughs> but part of the transformational journey is of course doing this together Acknowledging each other's position, uh, influence, but acknowledging that we're all human beings and that we're all hoping to create a better society in which we all have to play our role. And I think the key message of this transformational journey is that we're hoping to, well, may I challenge the commissioner by saying breaking down the bu bu bureaucracy a bit and trying to make it more open, engaged with society. And I think digital innovations will help and force us to make the shift on the long run. Because citizens as they look around they see society changing they see their daily life and their daily systems changing and honest and faithful taxpayers will ask hey where in this new changing world is my tax administration which i like so much well and the i think the, the call for tax administrations is to be there to be part of the change and that's not easy. But I'm very happy to hear with Commissioner how this resonates with the Commissioner. It's all yes, about sir. human human interest, I think. That's 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 basically uh, I think what it is. Thank you. What a wonderful question. Congratulations. Thank you. And the Commissioner General is here. And uh, CJ, while you answer the question, please you could also give us some closing remarks so that then we can hand over. Uh, to again Iwamba. Thank you very much. Um, let me start by appreciating that very uh, good question. And I'm very happy to know that there are Kenyans out there who have such a positive attitude towards payment of taxes and uh, also the tax authority and are willing to come out and support. They are wondering how can we support this journey. And we truly appreciate that. 
Uh, first, we, as an, uh, the professor has very well articulated the journey which we will move, or well, the tax administrations are moving towards. And there is one question he posed and uh, remain in my mind that we should be moving to, a, to where we shall have tax administration without a tax administration. That, <laughs> that was very intriguing and uh, really stuck in my mind begin to see that future. But back to this question, we truly appreciate that our taxpayer walk with us this journey and uh, through various support interventions. And one of them is having the right attitude towards payment of taxes. Like Professor have said, one must be honest. He must begin by wanting to pay taxes, wanting to comply as a citizen, wanting to do the right thing. So that now it is not us coming to thrash you out, and, and because that relationship is never a good one, if we, there is a tax authority coming to look for you, and uh, you are uh, hiding and all these other things, it's not a good one. But when we find you trying to do the right thing, trying to comply, then what you are looking for is assistance to do so. Then we will be very very glad to do so. Because it means your fundamentals are right. You first appreciate the, the need for taxes by government. You also know that taxes come from citizens and you are, you, are, you are one of the citizens. You are willing to comply. You are honest. That is the attitude where we begin. And when we find you with that, then we are very, very happy. In fact, the conversation is a friendly one. Then the other support we need is the, 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 when I think Professor has alluded to it, when you become our advocate out there and a uh, ambassador out there, and you talk positively about payment of taxes, you encourage others to do the same, uh, that is very, very helpful. The other one we would look for is more of feedback. We would like to get to continually get feedback from our taxpayers. Uh, whether the feedback is going to be positive or negative, we want feedback so that we can continue improving. We want to have a connection with our taxpayers so that then we, we know what they, are, what they feel uh, we should be doing. What is it that we are not doing right? And how, and not just feedback, but also uh, ideas and proposals of how we can improve. So when we receive those ideas, and we have we have various platforms within the authority. Some are emails, others are, are our tax point, uh, ta you know, ta uh, touch points through our customer service uh, management. Uh, our, we have a, a complete uh, platform we call IWE, so you can give ideas to us. We we will appreciate that. Again, if you are, you could also even go further. Sometimes it's a complicated one, but. When you have information about people not, not paying taxes, we also appreciate that. You make our work easier. We will use that information in a confidential manner, and we will be able to share that information with us so that we can, you can support our tax compliance efforts so that then we, we, we go out there and enhance compliance. So from where I, I sit, that attitude, that advocacy, feedback, uh, uh, positive uh, talking about payment of taxes mm -hmm. and uh, encouraging your neighbors and uh, the people you live with to pay taxes, being positive and uh, giving us ideas would be very, very helpful for the people out there. So that would be my request to you as we journey, we make this journey. Personally, I, I, when I get into any office, may it be a government office or a private office, and I don't get attention in terms of the, the needs that I, the, the issues I wanted resolved, and I don't, I'm not treated with respect, I am not treated well, just like any other Kenyan, I feel it, and that is what we are trying to do here. Because we must do unto others what we expect them to do, what is we expect to be done unto us. So we are building a culture 
where we will we are making it our responsibility that every taxpayer we, enc we, we encounter with uh, leaves us with a positive experience. Yes, they may have some taxes to pay because the payment of taxes is legal, it's procedural, there are issues we shall go through. But at the end of it, they must live uh, uh, with a positive experience. They must live knowing that they, have, they, they are better and they have done something that is better for, in the interest of the country. That is where we are going. And we pray and believe that uh, with your support, we, we should get there. Now, turning to the closing remarks, first I must appreciate you, Professor, you have done a lot of justice to this conversation. We are very, very grateful. Indeed, your knowledge and depth of understanding is amazing. I'm sure we shall have uh, further engagements with you. <laughs> I will ask my team to reach out so that we can get some deeper uh, uh, engagement on some of these issues. They are very, very, very important. And I pray and hope that you'll be available for us. We, we would like to tap into that uh, knowledge. I would also want to appreciate the, the idea, the, 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 the participants who logged in in huge numbers. Uh, the interest is high, 1,005. I saw it reach to 1,500 at some point, and it's amazing. The interest mm -hmm. on this topic and, and on this particular public lecture was, was very high. We must thank you all our participants for coming in and for being very engaging. The questions we have pushed to the professor. <laughs> I am sure they, they, I realize there were quite many and uh, deep. And uh, that level of interest is very good for any public lecture or for anyone who delivers a message to people and expecting feedback. The questions are part of the feedback, that they have an audience, that the audience is with them, that the audience is interested and that the audience is, is, has issues they want clarified. Uh, I used to be a teacher one time, and uh, when there, if I would go to class, professor, and teach, and there is no question, I would, I would not know how to make out of that. Or was I understood? Did I talk? What happened? That is a question I would not answer, uh, and they would trouble me. But this particular one, professor, the audience was very engaging. Uh, the conversation was deep and tells you the level of interest that we have uh, uh, in this area. So we must thank our participants and uh, for those questions and, the, and the, uh, the engagement. For us, moving forward, Professor, I believe we will be engaging further in these processes. We want to move to that tax administration 3.0. We are somewhere in that journey. We, in the digital uh, maturity, uh, we are also somewhere in that journey. And we, we have our own aspirations of where we want to move in terms of, uh, especially what you brought out, that we now take tax administration to the societal uh, area of activity where they are generating uh, transactions. We take taxes from there. We do not have to bother them anymore. And uh, we, we do not have to spend a lot of time moving back to take the, check their books because we collected the taxes at the right place and uh, with the right technology, with the, the, the ease. They didn't even notice <laughs> that the tax has been taken. Uh, and they, they don't have to start struggling that I have now to keep this money for the tax agency to pay it in the future, uh, maybe within a month, two months, those kind of things. That's where we are, we, are, we are looking forward to. We continue working very closely with the OECD. Uh, Kenya is one of the countries that participates virtually in all the engagements of OECD, in all the committees. We are in there because we want, we want to get gain from the, the world of experience sharing that happens from the global community. So we always interact at that level and we shall continue to do so. I have chaired the Africa Initiative for the last two years. I think I, I, I will be handing over in November uh, where we, we brought together all the African countries and in matters exchange of information. And it's been truly an amazing experience. So to us, OECD is 
one of the, our major partners in terms of uh, development of, of the tax administration and taxation tax policy and administration. So truly, we we are we are very grateful. I would like to end by saying that this conversation has generated uh, very beautiful ideas. The, in fact, it is not these things we are discussing are not in in a distant future. They are in the now and in the near future. And uh, the, the world must start thinking about the distant because all these things we are discussing right now are not in the distant future. They are actually the now and the immediate future because that's what everybody is thinking uh, through to bring down the cost of tax administration to remove because there cannot be a good relationship between us and our taxpayers if we shall build a, our legion is going to be based on business intelligence where we come and profile them and face them with the uh, tax bills from their past that cannot be uh, the, the future of tax administration it has to be that we have used data and technology to identify them when they are become taxable register them and facilitate begin facilitating them to, uh, into compliance collect the taxes where it is need, it's due at the right time and there is no future engagement uh, looking back so that they can continue with, with their lives without worrying that some 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 day the tax agency will come and uh, begin uh, querying them and uh, talking about those kind of things so thank you very much professor and uh, the team and uh, i am very delighted to have been part of this conversation uh, this morning thank you very much over to you uh, mugambi uh, thank you very much, uh, CG. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Aronson. We really appreciate your presence here. We know that uh, your schedules are very, very busy, and uh, we appreciate that you could join us. I also want to thank the rest of the team that has been here. We have uh, had a number of our board members. We have had a number of uh, people from other tax administrations uh, across Africa and out of Africa. We have had a number of senior uh, government officials and uh, senior private sector operatives. And, and so I really want to thank everybody and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to moderate this important uh, forum. This presentation will be placed uh, on the summit webpage. And so it is available uh, for everyone. And uh, may I now take it back uh, to again, Wamba. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Mugambi Murigi, for that very enlightening, very engaging conversation with Professor Rex from the Netherlands. We've indeed learned a lot. Um, thank you as well, Commissioner General and the entire board and the leadership for really steering um, uh, this waters of the eighth annual tax summit where knowledge meets practice. All presentations, as Dr. Murigi has said, will be available on the address summit.kra.go.ke that's summit.kra.go.ke ladies and gentlemen um that's it for our two-day uh, summit we have enjoyed your company we've enjoyed the camaraderie we've enjoyed the dialogue and the discourse and indeed we've taken the lessons that we need to move forward just before you exit the meeting we're going to play you a short highlight video um, of the moments great moments that we've had in this summit, after which you are free to take your leave. My name is Wagani Kimani Wamba, and I've been your moderator. Till next time, um, have a great, 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 great rest of the week. Kwaherini. The requirements of large taxpayers are different from those of the medium taxpayers and those of small taxpayers. Even the individual taxpayers have their distinct requirements. It is therefore paramount for tax administrations 
to develop policies that respond to the needs of various customer segments. Quite often, um, we get accused that because of collection targets, uh, the, the focus is on only collection and the service aspect uh, perhaps uh, uh, diminishes. But the, the, the thrust from the board and management is to ensure service delivery. And that's a journey that has started and it's an irreversible journey. Technology reduces the burden of manual tasks by automating the processes. Keraiz continues to leverage on technology to improve speed and accuracy in its tax services. For example, the iTax system has integrated almost all processes, making it convenient for taxpayers to assess services while enhancing Keraiz's efficiency. It is important that we look at it from all angles, that it is not just for the sake of the tax administration, but more importantly, for the benefit of our taxpayers as we simplify our processes, as we try to make tax compliance easy. One of the impacts we've had is even in the community, you know, where we come in together as agencies, be it at Moyale or Malaba or Tabeta, you know, be it at the border between Namanga, you know, where Kenya and Tanzania are coming in. The community around there has grown and we've seen impact in terms of you know, businesses cropping up, economic activities coming up. We've had a lot of influence and impact on the community. We've trained a lot of our women, especially, and there's a lot of focus on women and small-scale traders. So there's a lot of that also. Interrelationship of the activities within the tax administration, holistically, and put in place interventions that encourage support and collaboration within the tax administration, that then reflects out there to the taxpayers. The idea of digitalization uh, is good, but uh, we need also to be ready to, 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 to implement it so that it can bring a good, a good change. So what are our prospects? We want to introduce the, the VAT rebate uh, program. We want to extend VAT on digital and online services following the example of, uh, uh, of, of Kenya. So we are currently very much in Gateway really Ataf on a study to see what would be the impact of such a move on uh, policy side. We are seeing uh, the uh, adoption of, of cloud technology. And cloud basically provides the foundation upon which an organization can be able to build modern uh, strategy uh, by not only looking at the on-demand storage and compute, but enabling uh, access to latest analytic and machine learning capabilities, uh, things uh, such as uh, data lakes, uh, which basically uh, helps you to be able to move from a siloed approach and to adopt uh, modern ways of centralized storage of this data. The key uh, deliverable of BI is to help us to inform decisions. So even if we can use BI to track quality, it can also help us to, to come up with interventions or actions that you need to do back in our source systems on to improve that quality. Data and the protection of the governance around protecting data for the clients with BI, personal identification information is very key. And as part of our research here at uh, Institute of Mathematics, we figured out that the other ways is a very interesting field for federated learning, which has been growing over the last five years. How much does it cost to produce a product and where? What type of policy should we advance? And that's where this, this link between private sector and government, because private sector tends to have the information uh, that is needed for government to pass the types of policy that would help them capture a better market. The day we have, as Peter mentioned, a grower of bananas somewhere in central Kenya or of maize somewhere in eastern Kenya, who is able to know that there's a market for the maize in Ghana, then we know we have arrived. And but if you look at it, agriculture is 30 percent plus in terms of contribution to GDP. The amount of financing of, from banks going to agriculture is less than four percent, and that four percent is going to exporters. So the key thing is that you are expecting farmers to transform the way they produce, but they're not even able to access capital. So we need to first find ways in which we can give them access to capital 
and help them transform their means of transfer of, of producing and, and and basically help bridge the food gap that we have Okay, you're on mute. Such great highlights. Wow, we've had a very great laugh. Um, thank you very much to the media team for sharing those highlights. Um, very nostalgic and we appreciate. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with the summit and you're free to exit the meeting and please carry the lessons with you. Till next summit, please do enjoy yourselves. Asantini. <laughs>